Hey, everyone. Contrary to what the title says, I'm not really going to tell you how to be a good parent. I'm just going to talk about my experiences of being a parent. Um, so I started going out with this girl. And in a quick time, she basically manipulated me into moving in with me. <laughs> That's what she did. But then she moved in with me and she had two kids and now suddenly I've got two kids that I'm responsible for and I've got to be a parent to and I'm like, fuck. I haven't done anything in my life that's going to prepare me for this year. What the fuck? Whatever. So at first, I, I basically didn't do any parenting really. At first I just watched her parenting and tried to learn things from her and stuff. Um... <laughs> yeah it's, and also like basically so I was an anarchist and I had major problems in my head like what the fuck like how can I how can I be an anarchist and like impose my will on somebody else do you know what I mean and try to control somebody else and stuff like how the hell can you do that if you're an anarchist right man it all comes down to authority and stuff it's basically like me imposing my will on somebody else that's basically what authority is and like I'm anti-authority. How the hell can I justify doing that to a child? Or what? I just had major, major problems about it, like philosophically, about being a parent. And then I reread some some old anarchist writers, and I read this thing by Bakunin, and he talks about it directly about being a parent. And he says that look, like anarchists, we're not against authority. We're against illegitimate authority. That's what we're against, and that there is certain things that are legitimate authorities one of which is being a parent because you're not dealing with an equal right and like this authority thing is about how it equals how how adults deal with one another a child is not an adult a child doesn't even have the brain the brain hasn't formed enough for them to be able to make the decisions that adults could can do you know what i mean and a parent's job is to protect that child and if the child doesn't know about a danger then it it's a parent's obligation to like intervene and stuff like this. But you have to be careful that you're not controlling the kid for your own benefit. Do you know what I mean? Like, like if you're doing something and the kid's making a lot of noise and stuff, you it's not legitimate for you to send them to the bedroom or something like that just because you want them to be quiet. That's not legitimate. If they're sticking the fingers into fucking electrical sockets, you're perfectly entitled to pull their hand away and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? So there's like legitimate ways that you can you can use authority and then I was like, right, that cleared a load of shit out of my head, do you know what I mean? And yeah, so like for probably about first year I was just really looking at looking at my girlfriend and whatever and I could see loads of mistakes she was making or what I thought she was. Basically like we were together about six years and for five years I, I was basically the parent. She she once I started parenting, she just backed off and left me to do it. There's a major conflict, this, between us. Because, like, like, whatever, kids... It was basically, like, like, any question that needed to be answered for the kids always came to me, right? So it was always me who was saying no to them, do you know what I mean? And I was like, it's not fair, right? Why aren't you making these decisions? Why do you keep sending them to me? Right, whatever, it was a massive argument between us two about how she just booked out of being a parent and was leaving it all up to me. But whatever, I, I absolutely loved being a parent. I absolutely loved it. It was massively, massively challenging. <clears throat> and so, essentially, I thought, right, so, so right, what is, my, what is my fucking purpose as a parent? What am I supposed to do here? What is what my fucking aim? What am I trying to achieve here with this, right? I'm trying to achieve, right, I'm an anarchist, I want to bring these kids up to be anarchists, so these kids are, are going to think for themselves and stuff, they're not going to fucking just do as they're told, they're going to question everything, they're going to be a fucking thorn in authority's side and stuff, I'm going to learn them to hate capitalism and whatever, and I'm an atheist, so I'm going to, te I'm going to teach them atheism and stuff like this, and, but... I'm, I'm here to teach them stuff, but I'm not here to tell them what to do. It's not my job to tell them what to do. They have to figure that shit out for themselves. What's my job is to provide them with a framework so that when they make decisions, they make the right decisions. So I'm going to teach them about ethics. I'm going to teach them about morality. I'm going to teach them about how you deal with other people, what social relationships are like and stuff. Um... And I'm just going to provide them with the tools to be good people. But I can't tell them what to do. It's not my job to tell them what to do. Right? 
I'm not here to be some kind of boss. Do you know what I mean? And and so one so this is one of the things that you have to think about is like within a family you're gonna have to make decisions. Do you know what I mean? Like who's gonna do washing up or what time the kids have to go to bed or whatever, right? There's gonna be there's gonna be rules and stuff to the family. Do you know what I mean? Because every you need rules, right? Yeah. And as anarchists, we're all in favour of rules. But what's important to us is not what the decisions are that are made, but how those decisions are made, right? So, so like I say, first year I wasn't really being much of a parent. I was just kind of observing and thinking and thinking about it myself and stuff. But then after that, then I started to take much more control over the ki- like what, how the kids were being taught and stuff and what was happening with them. And so basically I introduced a weekly meeting into the family, right? And at that meeting we would discuss anything, anything to do with the family, but also any rules or anything that were there. And like the kids could bring up whatever they wanted. So like it'd be like whatever, Josh had to do washing up and Zara had to do the drying up. Yeah, so that'd be the rule. But then a bit few weeks later they'd come back going, oh, can we swap it over? I don't want to do this anymore, blah, blah, blah. So they'd bring that up at a meeting, and well, well, with that, obviously, we've not got any objections to that. It doesn't really matter who does what, but whatever, right? So they'd change that and stuff, yeah. Um, and basically what happened is the adults had 1.5 votes, and the kids had one vote, right? So, so adults' votes were worth more than kids, yeah. But it still meant that the kids could win if... So you can either vote for things, against things, or you can abstain. So if one of the adults abstained, the two kids ganging up together could beat the one adult. Do you know what I mean? Right. So that's basically what the the rules about meetings were. But if we were deciding something, we used consensus politics. So we used an anarchist method of consensus politics. So if there was a proposal, there'd be votes for, against, and abstain, right? And if there was for and against, you try to get... Each side tries to get the other one to go into the abstain so that, at the end, we haven't got anybody who's against it. Yeah, not everybody's in favour of it, but nobody's against it, and that's, that's, that's what consensus politics is. And so that's what we used as, like, our decision-making thing. And, um... And the thing is, like, it worked perfectly because the kids had an opportunity to vent if there was something they didn't like. They had a, they had a forum by which they could bring it up and that we could solve whatever problems they had and stuff like that. And it worked, it worked really, really well. I remember this one time. Um, so, like, basically the kids' bedtime was, like, I don't remember, but 9 o'clock, say, right? So, so me and Jules... Their mum were talking and we were like, whatever. They're getting a bit older now. They can, they can, they can probably stay up a bit longer than that. Do you know what I mean? So, so then when it came to family meeting, we brought that up for discussion, right? Um, see what the kids think about that. Um, so whatever, we're expecting kids to go. Yeah, whatever, we'll stay up later, right? But, but what Josh said was amazing, right? Josh goes, look, we don't, we shouldn't. We shouldn't go to bed an hour later. What we should do is we should go to bed at the same time, but we should be allowed to stay up for an hour to read a book or do something to calm down before we go to sleep. I was like, that's a fucking awesome idea. <laughs> that's a really awesome idea. So basically, Josh would read a book, but then Zara was like, I want to watch television, I want to watch television. And I'm like, yeah all right okay you want to watch television but like if you're watching something that's all stimulating you that's not really going to make you go to sleep so so you can watch television but you have to watch that you have to watch 24 hour news <laughs> i'm like whatever so well get bored of that and go to sleep won't you? <laughs> anyway, all right so so it was good because when we started doing this in the morning she'd watch some on news that she didn't understand and she'd be like what the hell's this what's that i remember coming down and saying, what's going on in gaza i'm like i don't know i haven't turned news i don't know what's happening in gaza it's just like there's bombs going off and all this sort of shit israel had attacked gaza so there was loads of times when she'd come downstairs with questions about something that she'd seen on the news which was pretty awesome because we got to talk to her about the world and what was going on and politics and all sorts of shit like that Do you know what i mean she was about eight or something 
she was uh, she was seven when I when I was first and then, like when we split up she was like thirteen or something. So it was like six years or something. But yes, yeah, so she'd come down. The, the major problem was that that's exactly when Madeline McCann went missing, right? And that just totally fucked Zara's head in. We had to stop those, this all watching the news business. She, 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 she proper, she wouldn't go outside because she thought somebody was going to fucking kidnap her and all this. That shit was awful. It was, like, it was a really bad idea watching the news thing with this. It went on for months and months. But, but, but whatever, the thing is that, like, Everything was up for grabs, right? It wasn't us telling them what to do. It was all about debate and discussion and we come to some agreement about what we're going to do, right? And it's better doing it this way, right? If I start telling them, you're doing washing up, you're doing this, they're going to start resenting that shit. But if we've sat down and had a discussion and gone, look, the fucking washing up needs doing. I've just done the fucking cooking. I'm not doing it, right? Whatever, you've just had some dinner cooked for you. You, you do it. You could fucking contribute something to this family. Basically, all they contributed was they did the washing up or the drying up and one of them put, put the bins out. And that was, the, that was the entirety of what we asked them kids to do. Every weekend... So, again, at meetings, we decided that we need to clean the house at some point, right? And it's and we're all living in this house, so we're all fucking cleaning it, right? So so then we decided Saturday mornings, ev that's what we do. That's the family cleans the house. We all have certain rooms and stuff that we clean. You clean your own fucking bedroom, whatever, and I'll be coming and having a check afterwards and you, you make sure you do it. But, like, the thing is that, like, because they're involved in it, they understand how important it is and that it actually needs to be fucking done. It's not just that your parents are telling you to clean your room. You understand the, the fucking house needs cleaning, yeah? You live in it, it needs cleaning, and you, you, so you're going to fucking clean it, yeah? With all of us, we're all going to do it, yeah? Because we're all living in this house, so we all need to clean it out. So that's basically all kids were ever asked to do, wash up, dry up take bins out and clean your fucking bedroom once a week at weekends. That was it, basically. That's all that we're ever asked to do. Um, and not bring the police to our house. <laughs> that was another thing. Um, yeah, so so whatever. So so there were, there were certain... There were certain rules, yeah, um, that... That was set there. So, but whatever. Sometimes the kids broke the rules and stuff, right? So, we didn't like using the word punishment because it wasn't really about punishment, really. It was more about teaching them a lesson rather than trying to inflict some kind of pain on them. So, basically, I, the punishments, they were, it was gradiated. Things got worse and worse and worse. But punishment or whatever was based around social access access to the group right so like the worst possible punishment was complete exclusion where you had to stay in your bedroom all night all day and all night and had no contact with the rest of the family like right so that's the, that was the worst punishment right yeah but the first thing is if something kicked off so like so it was a i had a boy and a girl right and josh was a bit violent he could lose his temper and he'd like start throwing things and stuff and try to smash a fucking guitar over his mum's head and stuff, right? He had a bit of an anger problem. So whatever, sometimes he'd kick off and I'd, like, have to restrain him. I'd have to physically restrain him, do you know what I mean? Like, I didn't hit him. I never, I would have never hit a child. But I'd have to grab hold of him and stop him and restrain him while, while I was trying to kill his mother or whatever, right? But basically, it's things like that a bit. 15, go to your bedroom for 15 minutes, right? And then after the 15 minutes were up, I'd go up to them and I'd sit down and I'd go, right, what the fuck's going on? Right, why are you acting like that? What happened? What's going on in your head? What problems have you got? Blah, 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 blah. let's talk through this. Clearly, you know what you're doing's wrong. It's not helping anybody. And it was always about the social aspect of it because we're trying to keep teach these kids how to live with other people right how to how do you they're going to be we're social animals you need to learn how to deal with other people right yeah so so that's what we're trying to teach them so we'd always be bringing it back of how do you think you're affecting the social group how do you think what you're doing is affecting everybody else in this room right do you know what i mean that that was like part of the teaching thing and part of the punishment was about so social exclusion not being allowed to take part not or my, another one was you might not get a vote in the next meeting or whatever do you know what i mean things like that 
So, so that was like the way that we tried to correct behaviour when, when, it, when it stepped outside the bounds of the rules that we'd all together set. Um, but, um, yeah, um, there's lots of things that, that like, um, that we try to teach them and stuff. So, like... So when they so when when they got to about eleven, right? I heard from one of their mates that they'd been shoplifting, right? So I was like, right. So what do you do about this? What the fuck you do in the shoplifting, right? So so whatever I shoplift. So me telling them not shoplift that just turns me into a massive hypocrite. I'm not gonna tell them not shoplift. So I'm like, right. So whatever, if they're gonna shoplift, and they are gonna shoplift, all fucking working class kids around eleven years old are gonna shoplift. I don't care what your parents are. That's what they do. Kids do that. It's just part of fucking growing up. Every working class kid starts shoplifting around that age. So like, so what do you do as a parent? What's your fucking job? What's your job here? I tell you what your fucking job is. Your job is to make sure they don't get fucking caught. That's it. I don't care if they're shoplifting, right? They've been taught not to steal, right? Stealing from other people, that's a big no-no. You're not allowed to do that. Stealing from a corporation, stealing from a company, help yourself, Do knock yourself out. I'm not going to tell you not to do that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to teach you how you do this so you don't get caught, right? So that's what I did. And I spent ages going into shops and teaching my kids how to fucking shoplift, right? So, so they didn't get caught, right? Only they did get caught because... <laughs> So, I got rule number one, right? You always buy something, right? You never walk into a shop, steal something, and then walk straight back out again, right? Because that's how you're going to get caught. You always buy something, right? So, that's rule number one. So, Zara gets caught shoplifting. Thankfully, they didn't ring police. <laughs> they knew us. We knew shop on her. They got in touch with us and we were like, oh, yes, we'll get really annoyed uh, when we take her back home. Oh, you're in loads of trouble, you young lady. Yeah, you're in trouble because you got caught, dickhead. How did you get caught, right? Yeah, you didn't follow rule number one, did you? You didn't buy anything. That's how you got caught. Why do you think I gave you that rule, dickhead? So whatever, kids are idiots. They're fucking idiots. So she didn't follow rules, so she got caught. <laughs> whatever, right? Whatever, I'm not getting blamed for this shit. I'm trying to teach you how to not get caught and you're not, clearly not fucking listening. So whatever, she hasn't been caught since. But whatever, right? The thing is, that's what I did. That's what I thought was the thing to do as a as a parent, and I still stand by it today. You just the thing is, don't get caught, don't get a criminal record. I don't care if you steal. I don't care. I do care if you steal. I, I make a distinction between shoplifting and stealing. You're not really stealing from a company. A company's biz. The whole purpose is for them to make money. So they do that by charging us more than what the thing's actually fucking worth. That's how they make profit. So whatever they're fucking stealing from us to start off with. So fucking repatriate it. Shoplift. I don't give a fuck. Do that. Right, so lying. Yeah, so lying. Is that a big? Is that a bad thing? Is that a, what's a good thing? What do you do with that? Do you tell them off for lying? No, no. You teach them how to lie. You tell them, look, look, lying, lying lying's not a good thing, right? But there are times when you're going to have to lie. So you're going to do something, you get caught, you're going to have to lie, right? So you need to learn how to lie, yeah? You also need to learn that it's better not to lie. Most times it's better not to lie. If you get a reputation for a liar, then that's not a good thing. So most times you only lie if you have to, right? But then you need to learn how to lie and be convincing when you lie. So that's what you teach your kids, how to lie. And tell them when to lie and when not to lie. You teach them ethics, you teach them morality. And this is what it is. Let's not pretend that people don't lie. People fucking lie all the time. We all lie, right? So we all lie. So let's not pretend that we don't, right? And get on it. Oh, don't lie. It's moral. No, it's not. That's just society, yeah? Whatever. We're private individuals. There's some shit we don't want to tell other people, right? So we lie. Sometimes we lie just because we don't want to hurt people's feelings. Yeah, there's all kinds of reasons why we lie, but we lie. So let's not pretend we don't. I'm not going to keep teach my kids that we don't lie. We do. But you need to know when to lie. And you need to learn how to lie. So, so the whole, the, the, a lot of this is down to what's right and what's wrong. Right, so how do you teach your kids that? Right, so 
whatever. If you if you're like a Christian, you might go, yeah, whatever. It's what Jesus. What would Jesus say? Yeah, and then that's that's how you know what's right and wrong. You think, what would Jesus say? Or you say, what's in Bible or something like that? Yeah, well, whatever. I'm an atheist. Don't believe in any of that shit. But but what what really what really benefited me in this was the fact that. When I studied philosophy at university, I took ethics and mor- a moral. Uh, I took ethics, which is about morality. Yeah, so I learned all the different moral frameworks that you've got: utilitarianism, virtue ethics, um, moral imperative. Um, the, um, what would Jesus say? What's that one called? I can't remember. Those. Anyway, I can't remember them all. But there's loads of different. There's loads of different ethical frameworks that you can use to decide whether something's right or wrong. You've got an act that somebody does, and you can put it into these different frameworks, and they'll come out and tell you whether it's moral or ethically correct or whether it's wrong. Yeah, that's what they do. They're just like little formulas that you use to work shit out, right? Yeah. So, like most people know utilitarianism. It's like the um, cause the least amount of harm. So I often use this like thought experiment of like there's a train track and it's going to knock over five people, but you can switch it so it moves and only knocks over one person. What do you do? And most people will say you'd switch it so it only kills one person because one person dying is least less bad than t- ten people dying. Yeah, that's basically utilitarianism. Anyway, right. The thing is that like. With the kids, I go, look, look, there's no one way to figure it out. There's not just one way of doing this. Lots of people, Christians and religious people and stuff like that, will tell you there's just one morality. But the reality is that there's not, right? And what humans do is we generally know about two or three of these different ways of looking at it. And when we look at an act, we generally go through these things and it'll tell us, yes, that's good or it's bad or it's good. And then generally we pick the one that we want, Right, so if we want it to be good, we'll pick one of these frameworks that tells us that it's good. Right, that doesn't sound like a very good way for humans, but that is exactly what humans do. Right, the, you're gonna you're gonna choose the one that that is in that that says it that you want it to be. Right, that's what humans do. So that's what you need to do. But you need to learn these moral frameworks first, so that you can get a range of answers before you make a decision about whether you think it's right or wrong. Yeah. So that's what I did. I taught them ethics. I taught them these different ways. And every time every time they did something wrong, I'd go, right, what does utilitarianism say about what you just did? What does eth- virtue ethics tell you about what you just did? What does this tell you, right? So do you think it's right or wrong, right? We just went, we'd go through each one to look at the particular act that they'd just done and then they'd have to tell me whether they thought it was right or wrong what they just did, yeah? And if they found out it was wrong, I'd go, then, right, well, what do you think I should do? Right? What do you think I should do? And they'd go, I have to go to bed for 15 minutes or whatever. So they'd know the answers because cause we've gone through this so many times. It's not me going, right, go, go upstairs for 15 minutes. They knew that that's what they needed to do because that was the severity of what they'd done. Do you know what I mean? And if I thought that their punishment should be more than 15 minutes, then it was a debate, it was a discussion between the two of us as to what that should be. Yeah, It's not just me unilaterally deciding what the punishment is. It's a negotiation, right? They realise they've done something wrong. They know that there's going to be a consequence of that. So it's a, it's a debate about what that consequence is, right? Do you know what I mean? That's, that's how we ended up with punishments, not me just imposing these things with them. It was a discussion between us, right? So, so yeah, right, so, so swearing, right, another thing that parents have a flip out, crazy fucking attitude to, right, so, I've kind of covered what I think about swearing in other videos, but whatever, I'll go over it again, right, so basically, I just, swearing's a lot of bullshit, man, it makes no sense, it's idiotic, and it's just a way of controlling people, it's a way of getting us to self-censor, you're essentially asking me to guess what you find offensive, and then for me to censor myself so that I don't offend you. Go fuck yourself. I'm not guessing what you find offensive, right? This is the thing. There's no such thing as swearing, right? It's not a thing, right? You can't give me a definition of it, right? If I say to you, here's a word, right? Is it swearing, right? There's nothing, you can't go, 
oh, you do this, 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 and it'll give you an answer, right? You, there's no way. You can't work out because it's subjective. Because what one person finds swearing, another person doesn't, right? My da my granda, right, he used to say cunt like every other fucking word. Cunt this, cunt that, cunt the other, right? But if you said the word bugger to him, he'd fucking hit the roof. It was like the worst word he'd ever heard. He would just go mental. Bugger today, nobody nobody gives a toss if you say bugger. If you say cunt, you can get banned off Twitter. Do you know what I mean? So, like, it's subjective. So there's no way that you can objectively figure out what is and isn't swearing because it's just dependent on who the other person is, right? So whatever, I think the whole concept of swearing is nonsense, right? The other thing is, right, I'm not going to start censoring my children. I'm not going to start telling them what they can say. Go fuck yourself. I'm not doing that. You can say whatever you want to say, right? Whatever words you want to express, that's that's entirely up to you, right? Like, whatever. If, if you were inciting violence or something, then I'm going to crack down on it and I'm going to tell you why I think it's wrong and all that sort of shit. But essentially, you can say whatever the fuck you want, right? And so... Do you know what I mean? The, ki the kids would call me a cunt all the time if I told them, oh, go upstairs, yeah, fuck off, you cunt. Whatever, I don't care. It's just words. And it's cl whatever, clearly that's how they were feeling and how they wanted to express themselves. P swearing's massively expressive. Massively expressive. If I go, fuck! You know not only what I'm saying, but you know the emotion that I'm feeling, right? It's massively expressive. People who think that Swearing means you've got a small vocabulary, you're idiots. Because it's, it's massively, massively expressive. So whatever, I'm not telling my kids what they can and can't fucking say. They say whatever they want. But what you do with swearing is, you you know what I mean? You, you say, look, whatever, I, I don't care whether you swear. You can say whatever the fuck you want, right? But you have to learn that like not everybody's as, as permissive as what I am, right? So you're not swearing when you're at your grandma's, right? If you're at your grandmother's, you're not swearing, else you're going to get into trouble, right? Because my mum's not going to accept that shit, and she's massively offended by it, so you don't do it, yeah? You can swear in front of me, but you don't swear in front of my mum, right? So you learn, teach them when and where they can swear, right? But they can swear, they can say whatever the fuck they want when they're in our house with us, right? I'm not, I'm not censoring my kids. I'm not doing that. Right, so we also taught them about racism, sexism, homophobia. Not only what it was, but how, how to identify it. So if we ever saw any examples of it, we'd point it out and go, what is that? What, what, what? What is that? And they've got racism, sexism, homophobia, whatever. Taught them all about that, how you've got to be inclusive. We taught them all about homosexuality. We had gay friends, anyhow. We had lesbians, friends, and gay friends who they knew, anyhow. So they knew about homosexuality, anyhow. But, like, whatever we teach them, the, the way that they are, the world actually fucking is, and the way that, the, the different kinds of people that you're going to come across. And now, and then basically, whatever, like, when it was, like, so. So even things like if they asked questions about politics or something, I'd go, look, this is what I think. I'm an anarchist. This is what I think. And this is what the rest of society will tell you, right? And that's what I'd do. I'd, I'd tell them both sides of it. I'm not just going to tell you my point of view. I'm not trying to indoctrinate you into my way of thinking. I'd like it when you get older that you'd come to the same conclusions that what I do. But that's entirely up to you, right? All I can, can do is provide you with the mental frameworks to be able to make the decisions. But I'm not going to indoctrinate you into my, my, my views, right? You have to come to these conclusions yourself. But I'll tell you what I think, and then I'll tell you what everybody else will tell you. Or what the other options are, or whatever. So, like, death, right? The question of death pops up. So, so what happens when you die? Yeah, well, I'm not telling my kids there's some kind of fancy little heaven place they're going to go. I'm going to tell them, you just die. That's it. End of story. Once the brain activity stops, that's it. It's game over. You've only got a certain amount of time on this planet, so you need to make sure you fill it in the best way that you possibly can. Right? You need to fill your brain with as good, as many good memories as you can possibly get so that when you're on your deathbed and you look back, you can go, that was a good life time for me to die, whatever, so you teach them about mortality and stuff, and I tell them the truth, and I tell them what happens, and I tell them what happens to the body, and how it decays, and how it, whatever, and how it becomes fertilizer for other things to grow, and stuff like this, so, so yeah, and like with death, I think, like, we always got pets for them, um, we had a dog, we had 
two carts. Zara had some some goldfish, who she named Emma after Emma Goldman and Lucy after Lucy Parsons. <laughs> she was eight and she knew who Emma Goldman and Lucy Parsons were. Yeah, I'm a good parent. <laughs> so she named she named a goldfish Emma and Lucy, <laughs> which I thought was pretty cool. And um, and Josh had some hamsters. Um, uh, so so whatever we always had pets, and all the pets were all named after revolutionaries and stuff. And like whatever. So so I had a daughter. So I was massively teaching her feminism all the time. I bought this book. Um, women Without Superstition who was like mainly about atheists but there was loads of anarchists and stuff like that and um, whatever I was always teaching her that she didn't she didn't have to, you know what I mean like she's a, she's she's equal and stuff and she should fight and she should never fucking submit and give in to people and stuff like that and I was always teaching her to be a bit of a tomboy it was a total waste of time total waste of time it's like whatever I'm trying to teach her feminism and she's like proper into pink and princesses and stuff she's a proper girly girl she's a really really girly girl she used to like to paint my nails and stuff like that. <laughs> put makeup on me <laughs> but, um, but I, yeah I was always pushing her to be a tomboy and she'd do it right because like jump off that run over there she'd do it she'd do it but it wasn't really who she was to be honest she wasn't a tomboy at all she was a proper girly girl but whatever, I taught feminism and it was a big thing and like sexism was a big thing, do you know what I mean? Because like, you're more likely to come into contact with sexism than you are racism and stuff. Racism is a bit more taboo than sexism. There's just casual race, casual sexism that you see all fucking time, do you know what I mean? Like, um, I don't know, one that I remember was about... Um, but there's loads of examples, right? So, like, basically, I've got my hair in pigtails, yeah? And I've always had my hair in pigtails. And Josh, my son, like, he wants to be like me, so he got he had dreadlocks as well, right? So I, I put his dreadlocks in for him. So he had dreadlocks. He went to school and he put his hair in pigtails because I put my hair in pigtails. And fucking teachers told him to take them out. I went mental. I went absolutely mental. I went straight to go see the headmistress. Gave her a right fucking mouthful. But whatever, first thing that Josh says when he comes home is, that's sexism, isn't it? I'm like, totally is. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Like, whatever. They just said that only girls could have pigtails. <laughs> whatever, you knobs. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> whatever. But, yeah, so these are things that we taught them. Do you know what I mean? Because these are important things in the world and they need to know all these things. If they're going to be good citizens, if they're going to be good people, if they're going to be good anarchist revolutionaries, hopefully, whatever, like they need to know these things. You know what I mean? You can't, you can't survive without things like that. Um, so, so, sex. Yeah, this is a thing that again with kids. What do you tell them? You, you just tell them fucking truth. Do you know what I mean? Like, don't hide anything from your kids. Why would you lie? Do you know what I mean? I'm not telling you there's a fucking Santa Claus. I'm not lying to you. Whatever. And I'm not going to lie to you about sex either. So you just tell them what it is. It's something that two people do because it's, it's fun and it's, it makes you feel good and stuff. It makes you feel closer to this other person and stuff like that. It can also end up with children and stuff, but it doesn't have to. There's things that you can make sure that that doesn't happen. You whatever you talk about... I, I remember telling him, saying, look, there's only, like, two animals that basically have sex for fun, right, three, dolphins, bonobos and humans, yeah, all other animals just do it to breed, but we do it for fun, we just do it for fun, because it's fun, and it's relaxing, and it also releases all kinds of hormones in your body and stuff, it helps you go to sleep and shit like that, do you know what I mean, so you don't lie about things like this, do you know what I mean, I remember... Fucking, this is one of the things with kids is you, just everything's going along, and then suddenly they ask some crazy question where you think, How the hell am I supposed to answer that? <laughs> so Zara's about seven, comes in, she goes, Third it, what, what, what's tea bagging? Oh my god, how the hell am I going to explain that? <laughs> right. Whatever, so I go, Right, it's something to do with sex that some people do to one another, right? A lot of times, it's it's more about trying to humiliate the other person, really, and it's about putting your 
balls in somebody's mouth or something like this. It's like it's like dipping a tea bag thing. And she was like, okay, that was it. Do you know what I mean? Because if they asked us any questions, we just told them what the fucking truth was, whatever. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and they knew that, and they knew that we weren't going to lie to them. We just tell them, just tell them it as it is and stuff. Yeah, another one of these I remember of how the fuck am I supposed to explain that? <laughs> is one day we're walking home from school, right? So I used to go, I used to go and pick them up from school every day. They were getting to age where none of their other friends were picked up by their parents. Where I'm like, whatever, I will pick my children up from school. <laughs> And so I used to pick them up from school and then we used to go to the park and we used to go hang out in the park for an hour or so on the way home and then we'd go to shop and what have you, right? But anyway, right, basically, one day we're walking home and Josh goes, Ferdy, and I go, yeah, he goes, what's quantum mechanics? <laughs> Why you fucking what? What's quantum mechanics? I barely understand this shit myself. And now I've got to explain that to a ten-year-old. <laughs> oh my god, whatever. So basically, basically, what I did with it is I just, I just like whatever. I'm not going to get into the complex mathematics of it or anything. I just basically tried to show him the wonder of it. It's an amazing thing, right? So basically, things can exist in two places at the same time, right? Things can pass through other things. If one thing's really far away from another and one of them changes, the other one changes. Just trying to, like, create a sense of wonder about this amazing thing that, like, is the nature of reality you know, down there or whatever. But whatever. You got you get questions like that will just throw you and you're not, you just go, like, what the fuck, right? Why are you asking me this? You're only 10. How do you even know about quantum mechanics? Where the hell have you heard that from? But whatever. But that was it. That was basically what it was like. 24 hours a day. The kids just thought I was the internet. They're just constantly asking me questions. Constantly. All the time. All the time. <laughs> and the, like, I put a, a world map up in Josh's bedroom. Big massive map. And like, if there were, like, I don't know. Like, I don't know. If there was, like, a competition between the two kids or something where where one of them was going to get something or something like that. I can't remember. But, like, I'd basically go, right, go find out what is the capital of Argentina. And they'd have to run upstairs and go on map, find Argentina, find the capital city and come down. And the first one who got it got whatever it was, whatever. But whatever, it was just awesome. I was teaching them all the capital cities in the world. You know what I mean? So that was a good, that was a good thing with them that I used to do. Um... But yeah, basically, like, uh, other things is, so, like I say, most, most, most of, like, most of, like, the rules and how, how, how life was or whatever were, were basically done through debate and discussion, yeah. So there'd be arguments, but what would happen is, after the argument had finished, I'd sit the kid down and I'd go through their the argument that they made, yeah, and then I'd teach them how to make a better argument, right? To how to win arguments and stuff, right? Again, this is more philosophy. It's basically what philosophy is. But I'd teach, I'd teach them down and go, look, you should have said this, or you could have said this. If you, Why didn't you counter what I said here with this? And then you'd have been able to say so and so. I'd go through their arguments with them, line by line, what they said and stuff, to teach them how to be better arguers, yeah? So that at the end of the day, they could beat me in an argument. Yeah, whatever. Good luck with that. But whatever, right, that was the aim. So I taught them how to argue, right? But... um. Like, the last thing I'm going to talk about, basically, is about, like, like, like what I say, I'm like, I'm not here to control them, I'm not here to tell them what to do, right? They have to figure this shit out for themselves, right? And one of that is about body, bodily autonomy, right? So, Zara, she's seven years old, she goes, I want my ears pierced, right? Whatever, lots of parents, there's no way they'd have done that at seven years old. But I'm like, whatever, it's your body, right? What's the worst that could happen? You end up with an hole in your ear, who cares? Right, it's your body. If that's what you want to do, then that's that's what you'll do, right? Fair enough, I'll, I'll pay for your ears, yes, or whatever. It don't really matter what I think, it's her body, and she can do whatever the fuck she wants to do with her body, yeah? Do you know what I mean? Um, and... So yeah, can't really think of anything else, to be honest. I'm really, really glad I did it. I, like, it's my biggest regret in life that I'm, that 
but I'm not a parent. I didn't bring any, any kids. But I had six years of doing it, and it was a massively rewarding experience seeing these kids turn into awesome little fucking characters that they were. And I don't know, they were really good kids. They were really good kids. They were really both really intelligent, both really bright. Um, and they've grown up to be awesome, awesome people, awesome adults as well. I like to think I had a part in that. Um, and they're both left wing. <laughs> they're both left wing, so. I did something alright, I did something alright. But yeah, I regret not having kids. I no regret not having kids. Um, oh yeah, other thing, right, there, so. I was basically, um, homeschooled them both for a year um, before they went to middle school. That was awesome. That was awesome. We just spent all time travelling all over the place, going to different places. Um, loads of historical places. Loads of left-wing historical places. I was taking them to places that were, like, important for the working class and stuff. I took them to Peterloo in Manchester and stuff. Taught them all about that. I taught them basically working class history. That's a lot of stuff I was doing. I did, I, I did maths and science and all the rest of the shit. But a lot of it, I was teaching them about the working class and the working class history and stuff like that. So they understood who they were and why, why it was important to fight for working class and what the working class was and what it meant to be working class and how that connected us with everybody else in the world and stuff like this. So, so yeah, I took a year. I mean, I was training to be a teacher before I fell ill, so like I kind of knew what I was doing. And I just wanted to prepare them for high school as well because it's, it's a difficult place to traverse and I wanted to make sure that they were... They were, they were, they were ready to face that. Do you know what I mean? And they were, and they were, <clears throat> and they did well. They did well at high school. They did well with their levels, GCSEs, whatever I call them. So yeah, yeah. I basically I, I homeschooled them for a year, and then I, I taught them about Summer Hill, which is like an anarchist school, or it's based upon these anarchist principles of what was called the free school movement in in Spain. Um, where basically the kids are allowed to do what they want and stuff, they don't actually have to go to any lessons and they've got loads of control and blah, 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 blah. And I taught them all about this and then they wanted to go there. <laughs> they didn't want to go to a local high school, they wanted to go to somewhere else. I'm like, yeah, it costs thousands and thousands of pounds to send kids there. It might be anarchist, but it's not for poor people, do you know what I mean? So, um, I'd have loved to have sent them to somewhere else. It's an awesome school, but, yeah, I'm poor, can't afford them. So yeah, that's it basically. That's how to be a good parent. Um, that's what I did to try and be a good parent.